Hey everybody, I'm Jesse, producer of the No Quitting the Home Team podcast. I wanted to give a quick disclaimer in that while we hope anyone who listens would gain wisdom and insight from Dave and Renee's conversations, this is still a podcast intended for married couples, and to that end there will occasionally be dialogue around sexual intimacy and other related topics. So, for those of you who may be single and particularly sensitive to this subject matter, or those who may be listening at home or in the car with their kids around, we wanted to give you a heads up in advance so that you might continue listening at your own discretion. Welcome to No Quitting the Home Team. It's been a minute. Um, this is a summer. Are we still We're classifying still ourselves as in summer? It is still a summer. A summer podcast on marriage. I'm Renee. Hi, Renee. Hey, Dave. Hey, Renee. Hey, Hi, Jesse. <laughs> yeah, so here we are. Dave, what's up? Um, quite a lot. Uh, today on the podcast, we are going to talk about a um, something, Renee, that you and I have noticed that people are clamoring after right now, and we're just going to call it out as fool's gold. Mm. That's coming up mm. later on, uh, Intriguing. on the show. But before we do that, Renee, how are we? How are you doing? How's marriage for you right now? Uh. It's, it's good. Um, maybe you start. Do you have any pressing assessments of, we, our kids started school yesterday, which feels like the first time in about 18 months that we can see space and time for productivity and conscious thought. Yes. Intentional conscious thought. Kids so that are, feels good. Yeah. Today's Thursday. Tomorrow is Friday, <laughs> which in our household, Q previous TGI means, means brush your teeth. <laughs> TGI. That is right, Jesse. Uh, TGI Friday. Kids are at school. It's just our day off. I cannot wait. Yeah. It's our first Friday like this since. Since COVID. Since March. Nope. Yeah. Probably March of 2020. Yeah. Yeah, so what's on the agenda? Tomorrow? Yeah. Lots of personal <laughs> hygiene. <laughs> yes. Okay. How else are we doing? <laughs> personal hygiene aside. Um, we, I visited my parents last weekend, which is always, yep. uh, which is great. And yeah, always fascinating going back to family of origin. Yeah family dynamics and then we like Ian and I my middle son and I our middle son and I we we went we flew there flew back in four days sort of teleported there came back and it was like a a crazy good and yet sort of bizarre experience in terms of just being with family and then being back in our family and yeah. the the difference in culture yeah both on the family level and it's reflected sort of community-wide between rural Oklahoma and Denver is significant yeah and so I, think, I, I feel think a little li I feel whiplashed a little yeah bit. I think people could probably relate to because I think between us I do not like how you are in your family dynamic I do not like what it fosters in you I don't like the role you take and so it is historically always been it's been tension it's been tension yeah yeah just just jumping in and out of systems yeah 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 so but we did it um a bit of an emotional whiplash but we're right back into into more denver moreland family life yeah i feel i feel hopeful about the fall. I mean, I know they're the COVID predictions vary wildly and some of them seem pretty grim, but 
we sent all three of our kids to school and in person, and we're hopeful that there's a robust experience there. Yes. Jesse, how's how's your life been the past few weeks? <laughs> well, uh, I'll speak lightly to my marriage, but my wife isn't here to give defense, so I'm not going <laughs> to. No. Um, we've been having some housework done, and that housework involved removing our air conditioner. And so you had an existing unit. We have an existing unit. It was right up against our kitchen. We had to have some foundation work done in the kitchen. They disassembled the air conditioning condenser, moved it. And so we've been without AC since August 9th. My wife very wisely on our, because we were on vacation and then we came back. Right. And vacation was glorious. Our connecting flight from Mexico was in Houston, which is where my wife's family lives. So she very wisely got off the plane, went through customs, and her and the boys went and got in her parents' truck and drove off, leaving me to fly back to Denver and live in a sweltering sauna for two weeks by myself. Well, good thing um, it's been cooler here. The yeah, last good thing weeks. it's been cool. It's cooled down. It was <laughs> hotter here than it was in Houston, I think, the entire time. Um so, yeah, you know, and I can survive in a, in a hot house by myself, but they got back on Tuesday, praise God. Uh, two weeks without my family was almost enough to make me insane. Um, but we've, we've been suffering together in this house, and it's going to be another week before we get AC back. So mm-hmm. we've been dealing with that and two small children mm-hmm. in a house with no AC. The baby doesn't really care. He's in the basement. He stays pretty cool. Uh, our almost six-year-old has been sleeping in his underwear on top of his sheets because it's so hot mm. in the house all the time. So Dave, how would I be faring in this, in this scenario? It would, we would not be in our house. <laughs> we would be outside. We would be, we wouldn't be in our house yep. at this point. I think it's a testament to the stubbornness of Michelle and myself because at this point, like we can't admit defeat. Like the house, <laughs> the house and the heat will not win. We will, we will be triumphant, uh, even if it means we're losing three or four pounds in, in water weight every night from wow. sweating to death. So uh, we're making it through. Um, there was there was some some personal hygiene Tuesday. Whenever <laughs> we were all back in the same place, that was. Uh, you know, too, it's, you miss, you miss your people after two weeks. So <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, but we've been, we've been powering through, we've been powering through all the construction stuff. We, uh, it's fun to have a noisy house. The, the shining beacon in all of this. Your is, boys love the construction. The boys love the construction. I sh- I sent my son Jacob a photo of the dirt mover that was in the backyard hauling up this like trench around our kitchen to install these piers. And he, uh, he got on FaceTime later and we were talking about, he was so excited. Um, but the big thing is we just installed a basketball goal. That's oh. good. We installed like a legit basketball that's goal. Amazing. Uh, so that's going to give my, my, my eldest child some great physical outlet and aggression outlet just get him get him outside and shooting hoops and he's he's completely content happy with everything in the world and it also it's a fun competitive Look out thing nuggets. for me and Look shell out nuggets yeah and speaking to having fun like <laughs> playing right yeah. like shell and i'd so important love so important. to play like one-on-one so, so we'll important. yeah so there will be uh some some good one-on-one basketball time so anyway our house is Good. It'll be way better six days from now when we have air conditioning again. So we'll follow up in a week. Wow. Okay. Well, we'll check back in. Good. Good luck with that the next week. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. We have Thank a basement you. if you need it. Yeah. Prayers up. Prayers up for uh, we have for a the basement Cowan if family. it gets too bad. I seriously. Hey, t- I mean, we'll let you know. So are we moving on moving to on. surprise question? Yep. So it's me. And I feel like I've been a bit unfair with these surprise questions. No, it's been good. You've I been just good. really have really just gone for the marrow with most of them. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you one that lets you do something that you like to do. Okay. Is be optimistic. Yes. And dream. Great. So what I'm, what I'm curious is to hear your thoughts on. So we've been married 21 years. And God willing, we could 
get 50, right? That means we're not even halfway there. Right. And we, we are kind we're not quite empty nesters. We're, we're not empty we're nesters. We're six years away from being empty nesters. Seven. But no one's counting. But who's counting? <laughs> well, he, Beckett's in sixth grade. Yeah, he has three years in sixth grade and four years in high school. That's three plus four, seven. Math. <laughs> but what I, I think we, I have, I mean, I've been uber reflective in COVID and very, um, just contemplative in the sense of what curious, what our life will look like and what will look like. And I think it's, it's such a wild ride to have children because you, you're rocking along just fine. We had a really fun pre kid marriage. We did. And we, we, we were doing just fine. And then there's this cataclysmic introduction explosion and you have to change everything and it, and it changes you too. Right. So, and, but you have to adapt to it and you have to figure it out. And then that's a good 25 years if you have three kids like we do, but then who are you on the other side and what, what do you hope? Here's my question and all of that. What do you, what do you hope that we will be and do and maybe be different than who we were before we had kids? Hmm. Great question. My, my hope is, is that who we will be will be people who are not just older, but actually wiser, um, that we could be, of resource to the community. Um, in what way? Well, that people just in our community would, would, would know if they have issues or questions or, um, or even just someone who could maybe understand what they're going through, that, that we would be sort of a known, a known place to go to find that. For um, like wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that it won't just be, um, I suppose another way of saying this, I don't want our empty nest years to just be for us. Hmm. I want us to enjoy it, but not be just about our own enjoy personal enjoyment. Hmm. Um, but to, to really have, have that sort of stage of our life be, um, for the, for the good of, our wider community. So, so give it, give that some feet, like with real life examples of, I well, want this. I, I feel like we, we're going to have so much more time mm -hmm. to give. And so it would be cool if we had young families or young couples who just, we kind of adopt into our family and we could become sort of de facto parents or grandparents to them. Mm. Um, Anyway, that that's when you ask me that question. That though, that's what immediately comes to mind. Are those sort of rich, kind of crazy, and like out there, or really different? Because we've kind of done that. We kind of do that now sometimes. Yeah. Is there something like outside of our box of who we've been that that's like we should? I want this to be true of us. That's such a, I mean, I think we have, we've had goals. Like we hope to one day have a mountain house, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, probably in another 20 years <laughs> might be a possibility. <laughs> so, but who, like you, I said, you, you're a dreamer. Right. Right. <laughs> um, but those are like kind of fun. I mean, that's, that's sort of, it's kind of a goal. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's not like, super duper meaningful it would just be kind of cool if that yeah. were the case um we had a place where our kids grandkids could we could disappear to in the mountains that would be neat but i don't know i i suppose does it feel too does it feel too far away yeah and and i i suppose i have a fear of a kind of retirement that is um, 
the people can become just sort of, they can kind of make their world smaller and smaller and smaller Mm -hmm. when they get older. And there, there's some component in which that, that inevitably happens, which I get, but, um, really happy couples who are in their twilight years are couples that are giving themselves away. Yeah. But you, we have a lot of years before you, we retire. I was going to say, I mean, retire. You're like, when Beckett leaves, Beckett leaves, you're going to be like 51. Well, so we, there's <laughs> that a, sounds like a good retirement age to me. <laughs> you've got a good, we've got a good 20, 25 years pre-retirement. Right. Yeah. I, I suppose I haven't really thought okay. um, creatively about it. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, we have more time to do what we already like doing now. Yeah, right. So to think creatively about doing something different, I haven't really, I haven't really thought about that. Hmm. So who knows? All right. Well, to be continued. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to switch to the helpful part of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> In a segment we call, no, but seriously. Um, and when we, Dave and I were talking about what he should talk about today, I, I wanted him to address something specifically. Let me see if I can frame it up. I, I see an enormous pressure, particularly on women and maybe on men as well, within relationships and within marriages, culturally, where the ultimate goal is self-expression or self-fulfillment. And it, you'll hear it dubbed different things. Like relationships end when one person isn't being fulfilled in the way that they should be or isn't that other person took them as far as they could relationally or that you're, you're not being allowed to be your best self or, I mean, think of some other ways culturally that, I mean, I, I get flack for if I ever mention that I'm doing anything self-sacrificial for you or for the kids, it's like, what? You, you, you know, you take yours, you do you, you look out for you, you, you know, so I, I guess I want you to articulate a, a defense of, a defense against that. Right. Culturally, because I think all of us feel that. Definitely. And I think, like I said, as, as a woman, I think even in this cultural moment, even more so, and why, why is, because relationships are inevitably about self-sacrifice, both ways, right? But that also means I will self-sacrifice for you and for the kids. Mm-hmm. And why is that good? And why is that um, bring joy, not diminish, in, in, in sort of the environment in which we f- find ourselves culturally? Um, it's a, that's a great question. And... I feel like a lot of people are attracted to that vision of seeking self-fulfillment and a resistance to self-sacrifice because maybe they have seen um, the extreme of it, extreme of it, or yeah, or personally experienced it, or they they saw it in their mom and dad, so they in their traditional relationship diminished past humanity. Yes, right. Yes. Right. No, I, I know where it comes from. I, I just feel like it's been taken so far that even the mention of you're doing something for the good of somebody else, yes. and that may be your husband, that, that, that culturally that's just not okay right now. Right. And, and that's where there's the fool's gold. Um, in countless studies, um, both social science and the social sciences, also in the world of philosophy – it's pretty much agreed upon that in order to achieve happiness, um, you actually, it's the most counterintuitive thing ever that you have to actually be a part of something that's bigger than you and your own personal Mm -hmm. fulfillment. And, and the biggest sort of bait and switch happening in popular culture right now, as these various manifestations of, 
you know, self-expression is the ultimate good right. sort of our, our experience is that that is, is decidedly untrue in terms of that being the, the pathway towards actually finding fulfillment or meaning or purpose mm. or happiness. It doesn't actually work. It is a brutal bait and switch. So, um, and it is also true that if, if all you do is give yourself nonstop and in a way that diminishes your humanity, in a way that diminishes your own agency, in a way that is, um, in which someone becomes a, a doormat, well, that's not a pathway <laughs> towards meaning, purpose, either. Um, so, which is it? Uh, this is where I am very, um, where I'm not ashamed to be a Christian, um, because within uh, within the gospel in particular, and in just the story of scripture, sort of in general, there is this abiding truth that goes something along the lines of um, the that the fear of the Lord or the reverence of God, the fear of God is actually the beginning of knowledge. It's the beginning of wisdom. And it's actually where you find satisfaction, the deepest kind of satisfaction. So, so if we start in our relational world with you, one's relationship with God, and if our posture towards God is that of reverence, or the, the old-fashioned term or the Bible term is fear, and it's not fear as in dread, but fear as in, as in a deep abiding appreciation and respect and love all, mm -hmm. all yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um then then our our posture towards god that's like the the fundamental relational posture we have so therefore and when we have the fear of god then everything that we do is in reference to that fear of the lord so uh, my relationship with work, my relationship with my coworkers, my relationship with you, Renee, with the boys, when I have the fear of the Lord within me, mm -hmm. and I get, I know that term has such a sort of old fashioned kind of, it's easy to make fun of, but just if you take it for actually what it means, when I actually have the fear of the Lord, then, then all of my other sort of re, uh, relational uh, relationships in my life tend to be rightly oriented, aligned, kind of. And and then and then now I'm actually in a position to where I can give of myself to you. I can submit. I can uh, sacrifice. Um, and and like legitimately sacrifice things that I might really want to do or might think would bring fulfillment or, or what have you. Um, but if that's actually coming from a position of, no, this is what God would have me do. So I'm actually trying to please him mm -hmm. more than, than I am trying to please you or anyone else. Then um, that posture actually brings incredible fulfillment and happiness. So this morning in my devotionals, I read Proverbs 19 and, uh, and I've read this dozens of times, but it's like I've, I've read this for the first time this morning, but Proverbs 19 verse 23 says this, it says the fear of the Lord leads to life. Whoever has it rest satisfied. Mm -hmm. And it's that word satisfied that I feel like really popped out at me. Everyone wants satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to have this sense of being fulfilled, satisfied, content, content. Mm -hmm. And and the, the historic, tried and true wisdom of how to find that satisfaction is actually in discovering what the writer here calls the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where you find real gold. The fool's gold is, no, I'm going to go after satisfaction. And whatever sort of my body or culture tells me is the pathway to that satisfaction, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes to find it. Nope. That's bait and switch. That's going to leave you feeling empty. Hmm. Do you feel like you felt this pressure too? Or or do you feel like this... Culturally, do you, do you experience 
the the reality that if I'm not happy or if I'm giving too much, or do you feel like it's, I, cause I feel like it's really loud with women right now. Yes. Well, I mean, I think you can look at like the midlife crisis of men, Yeah. you know, historically, historically right. where, you know, you divorce your wife and right. you get a convertible, you get the second wife, like that kind of is a stereotype, right? but that was basically the same thing. Mm-hmm. You only live once. Um, I, I want to do what's going to make me happy and only have a few amount of years left. I'm just going to do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, looking from the outside, looking in, it's obvious, it's pathetic. It's kind of pathetic that someone would do that. Like we can say that now, Mm -hmm. but, um, but the justification is the same. It's, I just want to live. I want to do what's going to make me feel the happiest. Yeah. It's, it's the same hyper individualism just repackaged yep. and yep. and it has led us as we like look to younger and younger generations we western culture is the loneliest and the most isolated yep. it's yep. ever been because of this because as you say we've been sold a false bill of goods yep. in that no the answer to your dissatisfaction and the the hunger you feel the answer to that's actually within you mm-hmm. and the further down the path you get uh, especially with people who have a, a proclivity or a propensity for anxiety or depression, yeah. they're faced with this question of, well, what happens if the deeper down into me I get, the less I like myself? Yeah. Yeah. Like, how do you answer that? And yeah. the less is there. The yeah, less exactly. That I have access to. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and how do you answer that outside of this, you know, this idea of like, actually it, you need to look outside of yourself mm-hmm. because you need, you need people to speak into your life and say, Hey, that's not all you are. Yeah. Your depression is not the thing that defines you. Yeah. Your, your anxiety is not the thing that like, that's not actually you. That's a part of you, but that's not you. Mm-hmm. And how do you get that if you're not in community? Right. Yeah. One of the most powerful sort of promises that Jesus gives us is something he called abiding or abundant life. Um, so this is a picture of life that's abundant. So it's overflowing. It's sort of this, this, um, this beautiful image that he gives several times in the gospel of John. And yet the pathway to experiencing that abundance of life, life overflowing is if anyone wants to follow after me, deny Deny himself, himself. take up his cross, take up his cross. That's not popular though, honey. And follow me. It isn't popular, right? but it's, it is true. Mm-hmm. It's where the real gold is. Yeah. All right. Thanks for Oof. that defense. Good stuff. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go to, um, like I said, I think in a previous episode, we could do 7,000 episodes about what's weird about us. We've discovered this is the easiest <laughs> segment to come up with things. It is. And what are we, uh, I know you have, you have kind of one thing in mind. I feel like what I'm about to say though, is really going to affect Jesse. Oh, it is. Oh boy. Oh boy. It's going to be awkward in this room. Yeah. Not a safe space for me. That's what you're saying. (laughs) It's not going to be just for the next couple of minutes. So. (sighs) All right. I'm centered. Okay. For anyone who knows me and knows 764 Garfield street knows that our house is freezing we keep our house freezing as it should be in the winter i would say unreasonably cold no 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 you can always put more clothing or blankets on how many how many nights in the winter do we not we live in colorado so we we get a few storms you know where the temperature is below zero right how many nights in the winter do we not sleep with our window open never this is the bane of my wife's existence <laughs> because she'll be turning the heat. Like if the heat breaches 70 in the winter, it's that dad like thermostat thing where like no matter where I am in the house, I'm like, is that above 70? Why is that above 70? It's time to open a window. Like, it, cause I'm the same way. I want it as I, cold as possible. For our night. listeners at home, I am on Amazon right now on my phone and I am buying a thermometer right now because I've been, I've wanted to do this. I need to have some sort of external a metric. You need a metric, metric to let me know. Data. 
what? That, that, that what I experienced during this during the winter time is not okay. So in like, the winter, do you what 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 are some things that you come to bed wearing? Well, a hoodie every night. <laughs> a hoodie every night. Often, often a stocking cap with the hoodie <laughs> over the stocking cap. Into bed. This is not real. Sweats. This is real. This is not this real. Is Sweats. Real. This is real. Two like two bl- like a th- two thick blankets, mm-hmm. and uh, and inevitably when I first get into bed, what am I doing? Drinking something, a warm beverage of well, some kind. Warm beverage. But what is my body doing? Shivering. Shivering. Unbelievable. It's not okay. Uh, okay, so cry not- for help. Um, <laughs> temperature somewhere, again? somewhere, my my wife just like <laughs> temperature her ears perked up. She doesn't know why. Temp stick. Okay, She's here in we solidarity. go. Solidarity. So conversely, in the summer, we have central air, which we talked on the earlier podcast ha- had broken as well, which was borderline tragic for me. But we also have a window unit in our bedroom. I kid you not. We have we have central air that I would keep on sixty five if I could, but I can't afford it. So I I usually put on sixty eight, and Dave kind of toggles it up to seventy. Yes, I feel like it's lived on seventy the last couple. It of weeks. has been, it, which and feels reasonable. No, it's too warm, and we run a window unit in our bedroom every night. Every night, and two nights ago, I woke up at two in the morning, and what did I keep saying? I'm so hot. <laughs> It's like 65 in there. It's so hot. Yeah, I know. I think yeah. I have internal temperature regulation problems. No. I, and I'm not a big person, so it's like, right? I, I don't know. But you've always run hot, though. I've always run hot. Yeah. I've always run hot. But so if you come to our... People know. People know when they come to our house. Like, my mom, when she visits, she comes equipped with appropriate outerwear. Yes. A traveling space heater. Um. Yeah, but I think that's really... But I guess Jesse's in the weird category with us. Oh, I'm it, yeah. If if that's weird, I don't want to be normal. <laughs> I uh, yeah. I and I and at the end of the day, I look at that. I look at that electricity bill. I look at it year over year, oh. and I go, hmm, worth it. In, yep. And Every in the, time. Well, no, in worth the winter, it. we don't turn our heat on until sometimes. And that's January. where I save it. Yeah. That's totally. where it, it yeah. balances out at the end it of the year. Out, and totally. we have a we and hey, if you're not on this. Uh, free tip whole house humidifier oh. run that in the winter okay. keeps your house from getting all dry and staticky and we oh, uh, that's a good idea. couple people in our house are prone to nosebleeds when it gets way too dry do you and put it in the bedrooms or is it in the no it's a whole house humid so it's through our central oh. yeah it's attached to the furnace make note honey I am. So. well and just so you know we are now the proud owner of a Thermo Pro TP605 digital Hygrometer, indoor outdoor thermometer. Hygrometer. Hey, we should we should track it for a year and see what is optimal for me because I'm thinking what's optimal for me is low fifties. Yeah, I'm thinking low fifties. Okay, freeze out. Yeah, we've purchased it, so okay. it's see, it's on our way. What happens is my wife tries to play the but think of the children card when oh it's better like, for them. But both oh. of our kids here, both of our kids are space heaters. They do not yeah. need the help. It's no, really baby, her. little kid. Little kids are little heaters. Yeah, yeah. and do you know I. What Dave said one time he came home. I think you were visiting someone at the hospital, and he said, "You know what? I was in the hospital, and it was so cold, and I I came to this realization that maybe your propensity for cold, wanting everything cold, has a secondary result of they keep of 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 the lack of tra- illness transmission, because that's why they keep hospitals so cold, mm-hmm. because bacteria and viruses." thrive in warm environments and, and it, it gave me complete justification for the rest yeah, of my that's life. All you you keep us well. That's yeah, all you needed. It, it's all in, in in the name of health for you and our family. Yeah. Thank well, you, Renee. You're welcome. I feel I feel like at some point we need to have my wife on here so she can give a defense for her <laughs> position because I feel like I'm 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 uh, I feel I'm fairly representing it. I don't think she would say that I'm fairly representing her <laughs> position. So uh, maybe next time, Shelly, you can come and come, uh, come tell, talk them, with us. tell them why I'm a lunatic and, yes, and lo- you and Dave are the normal people who are sweats to bed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Love you. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna split book recommendation and fielding a question. So I'm going to take the book rec. 
and I'll field a question. Do you want to go first and I'll go yeah. last? Okay. So, hey, by the way, thanks for sending in questions. Yeah, keep uh, them coming. They, you guys are actually sending in questions, so we're happy about that. Um, Dave at fellowshipdenver.org. Renee, Renee at fellowshipdenver.org. At fellowshipdenver.org. And send them in. So had a question last week that went like this, and I'm paraphrasing. Is it okay for um, a husband or a wife to be Facebook friends with former boyfriend mm. or former girlfriends? Not just Facebook, social media. Social media. But yeah. like to be Stay in, connected. Yeah, to, to be connected on social media with former former lovers. Okay, I want to hear Jesse's like just initial take. What's your initial, what's your knee jerk? What's your knee jerk? Uh, my knee jerk is that is way too nuanced a question to give a yes or no answer See, to. See, that's what I told Dave too. Uh, I said yeah. it depends. Depend, depends on the person, depends yep. on the nature. If it were an ex fiance, I'd be like, mm, 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 mm. or, you know, does that show that I am too insecure in my relationship? Who knows? But if my wife had been engaged to somebody before I was around, I, I would, I might be uncomfortable if she still stayed connected. Yep. To that person. Right. Personally. That's a perfect example. I think I said it if it if it if either party has a negative feeling about it or has a slight concern about it, you probably shouldn't. But like in my case, I could care less. Right. I mean I honestly I could care less if you are connected to former girlfriends and he has a lot. <laughs> Wow. Well then. Wow. Well Future then. episode. Um, I would say that in response to that question, the advice I would give is that um, anything that you, any relationship you have with anyone else that makes your wife or husband feel insecure or um, that where question where, fidelity where he Threatened. or she is not safe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Then, then I would always err on the side of safety for your own relationship, for your own marriage. Mm-hmm. In so, real life, in real life. Yeah, in real life. And, and so even if you think, gosh, it's kind of silly to me that, you know, my husband is, is so like, you know, seems so upset that I happen to be Facebook friends with, you know, a boyfriend in middle, from middle school. Like, okay, um... Maybe it, maybe it is ridiculous, but I would say I would say just as a rule of thumb, mm-hmm. why not? Why not? Why not make that sacrifice? Um, and uh, so I, in the course of pastoral ministry in the past, you know, sixteen years, have I seen couples whose relationships have have been near or actually divorced because of an ex of, of an ex that they met or sort of resumed a relationship on social media. Emotional answer that. Otherwise. Yeah. Answer that is yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So is that a real danger? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, are there real causes behind that insecurity? Yes. Yeah. So why, uh, you know, there are enough sh- stresses and right. pressures in your marriage. So yeah, what's why the benefit? Inter- introduce right, that? Right. Right. Um, personally, uh, I, I kind of, I get a kick out of your former boyfriends on Facebook. (laughs) Like for whatever reason in my psychology, that actually like massages my ego. Oh no. Gosh. I'm like, look at all those schmucks. (laughs) Another episode. (laughs) But, but if you were, but if I, if, if you were met to clarify, if you're private messaging. Yeah. Yeah. Any yeah, 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 yeah. D- yeah. DMing is a different yeah. conversation. Yeah. Just to clarify, that's yeah. off limits. Yeah. 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 Happy birthday on the Facebook wall, yeah. liking an Instagram post. If you're yeah. having to hide if you're having to hide or yeah. or if there's anything happening in the shadows, that's yeah. major yeah. red flag. Right, right, right. Cut right. it out. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Quit it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. Okay. Nene, yours. Um, so I'm I have a f- another fiction book recommendation. I got a lot of good feedback about my fiction book mm. yeah um and it's a this one's a little bit of a stretch but let me explain it is one of my favorite fiction books of the last couple of years that i've read and there's an aspect of this book that i think is crucial to marriage and there is a relationship in the book and it's kind of secondary and that's not what i'm talking about but 
um, in this book, the main character learns how to be content and thrive and find joy in an increasingly difficult environment. And I think it's beautiful. And I've, I made Dave read the book. This is one of our, honey, you have to read this. <laughs> um, but I, I think individually in marriage, there are, will be, if you are in it for a, a long period of time, there are going to be seasons where your spouse isn't okay, where your family isn't okay. Right now it feels like our world isn't okay. And there's an art to cultivating contentment and joy. And in this book, the main character, I don't want to give anything away, but he he is in a, a tricky situation that just gets more and more tenuous. And it is called A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tolls. And and I, I think in our relationship, that has been something learned. And I think it's been something that is 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 helpful for the relationship, but also for you individually. What do you think? I couldn't agree more. And it's about dealing with limitations. Mm -hmm. And what does it look like to embrace, embrace what it is that you do have? Yeah. Um, Not just make the most of it, but actually see what's beautiful in it. Yep. And be grateful for it. Yep. It's a beautiful picture of that. Yeah. And it's so well written. Great recommendation, Nate. So, Gentlemen in Moscow by Amor Tolls. It's on the list. All right. Well, hey, guys, thanks so much for listening. Again, if you have questions, send them in, Dave and Renee, at fellowshipmember.org. And have a good week. See ya. See you guys. Bye.